And, you know, I would assume it's the same out there. <laughs> it's about who needs Jensen and who doesn't. I mean, if you need Jensen, you're in trouble and you're worried about allocation. And if you don't need Jensen, well, you know what? Then you uh, have a pretty good run of the place. Hawk Tan does not need Jensen. He does not need Jensen Wong. He does not need to make it so that he gets Blackwell. But, David, you know, we keep thinking about that little piece that you ran yesterday. We had Larry Ellison talk about how he needs to get right with Jensen. That is the real subject of discussion. Oracle's resurgence from a 2% <laughs> grower to something far bigger. Why? They've got it right with Jensen. Yeah, Ellison now number two on the world's richest yeah. list. Uh, dethrones Bezos uh, catching up to end of Dead zones. Well, wait a second. We didn't even talk about NVIDIA. I mean, well, how can we we went for like, I don't know how many minutes. The <laughs> NVIDIA partnership meaningful for anybody who has T-Mobile? Absolutely. You know, we decided to announce today that we're putting a stake in the ground that the future of network architectures is called AI RAN. And we're partnering with NVIDIA, with Nokia, with Ericsson and others to bring the AI RAN future to reality. Now, it's going to take a few years. OK, we're only halfway into this 5G revolution. It's been around five or six years. But we're now turning the page and starting to architect with our partners what future networks will look like to make sure everybody has a better signal. In, in the, the meantime, I no longer have to give up on the Apple 16. It turns out it's doing better than we thought. Absolutely. So I've got to ask, doesn't this count as an important use case for AI? Last night, Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce, sat down with Jensen Wong, the CEO of NVIDIA, after inking a cooperation agreement. And Jensen opined on the state of AI, a field he practically created. Jensen loved the Salesforce agent plan. Believe me, if he didn't like it, he wouldn't have shown up. More important, when Jensen talked about it, he, he said, we haven't even scratched the surface of what we can be doing with artificial intelligence. Again, I think we're too downbeat about some parts of that. He defaulted to the healthcare benefits that we're already experiencing right now, where AI platforms are helping to cure intractable diseases. Mark concurred. Take a look at this. I think the next 10 years, uh, the, the breakthroughs that we're going to have in digital biology, the breakthroughs uh, in just helping uh, uh, diagnosing disease, um, the breakthroughs in science. We're going to have so many scientific assistants. Breakthroughs don't matter today. Will, believe me. Back, join me, Phil Panaro is the founder and former CEO at Boston Consulting Group. Uh, Phil, great to have you here. Thanks for joining the Schwab Network. Thank you, Oliver. Uh, let's talk here about the market, which has been kind of going back and forth, hopes that the economy is going to pick up and have a fresh leg versus all the tech stuff we've been relying on. Which here is the major force for markets, you think, at this juncture? Well, fr from, from a NVIDIA standpoint, my belief is that they're waiting for the Blackwell to be released, which is the next generation chip. If you look at the history of when they released Hoppe, which was in September 2022, the stock was either down or sideways for prior to that. And then once they released it, the stock went up hundreds of percent. So I see the same thing happening with Blackwell. The market is waiting for the Blackwell chip to be released. Uh, hopefully in the fourth quarter, if that happens, you're going to see a huge explosion of the stock in 2025. But my view, which is that, that NVIDIA will be 800 by 2030, has more to do than just one chip. It has to do with the fact that there's an AI revolution and we're only in the first inning. And actually, more important, we're migrating from Web 2 to Web 3, which Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley and Citibank estimates it will be a $10 trillion transition in the market. So NVIDIA powers all of the accelerated computing to make that happen. So they're going to have a major share of that. When you look at where we are right now, uh, we've seen all these hyperscalers spend billions upon billions. Microsoft's reserving 20 years of nuclear energy. Uh, does any of this uh, risk overspending in the short term? What kind of benchmarks will AI developments need to hit to uh, sustain that trend to justify it? I know everybody talks about that the NVIDIA revenue, 40 percent of it is with the four or five hyperscalers. Right. But that's actually the, the best case for why it's actually going to go up. Because if you look at all the other customers they're not getting to, there's 490 other Fortune 500 firms that haven't really adopted AI to the fullest because they don't understand it. You have all the cities and governments that are going to be redoing all of their infrastructure from Web 2 to Web 3. And then you have an AI arms race with countries and their militaries that hasn't, NVIDIA hasn't penetrated for the most part. You're going to end up seeing that piece 
end up being a bigger part in the future for NVIDIA revenue. So my point is you can see that the, 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 the stock can go to the moon, essentially, provided they deliver. Okay. Um, future chips. This, uh, I mean, you're not talking after any uh, splits or anything, right? We're just saying a clean 800 bucks, gonna 6x basically. Yeah, well, just so you know, when I was on last, it was 800 and I had said it was gonna go to 8,000. <laughs> it's split, now it's down. You know, so I'm doing the math again, it's 800. So it's very simple. So I'm keeping the same multiples, but I'll actually take you through the math. Yeah, when I do. was here at the last, uh, when I was here the last time, their revenues for the year was around 60 billion. We're basically saying they're gonna go from 60 billion to 600 billion by 2030. And if you look at the multiple on that, that will grow around 10 times. If you look at the e-commerce cycle, to the, a, the, the AI revolutionary cycle, it's about the same way. So if you look at Amazon, they were a $60 stock with 10 billion in revenue in 2005, and they grew to, to 100 billion by 2015, and their stock went to 600. So we're looking at about the same thing for Nvidia. We're saying the stock's at 80, and it will go to 800, and the, and the revenue will go from 600 billion to six to 60 billion to 600 billion. So you can see there's a lot of thought gone through with this, uh, with this prediction. But just so you know, mm -hmm. not to sound overconfident, it's actually inevitable provided they can continue to make these chips because the AI penetration in the economy right now is literally less than 1%. So you still have all the corporates, the cities, the municipalities, the governments, the militaries that are going to be spending money to make sure that they leverage AI effectively. So tons of money still to be spent. Uh, government, municipal involvement, about integrating AI into everyday life, is that part of uh, the process? So what inning is that? When will we see it expand out of the private sector? Does that, I mean, because I would assume that's a pretty big gravy train that hasn't left. Yes, so right now I actually am talking to firms and it's better to give real examples. Uh, so right now all of the city governments are looking about how they can automate their buildings to become autonomous buildings, leveraging AI through digital twins. What people don't understand about NVIDIA is not only do they have the chips, but they also have Omniverse, which is digital twins. And they also have CUDA, which actually provides the programming language. With that, you can actually provide a digital twin of a physical building, and you can run the entire building off your phone through the digital twin. So that will allow you to automate all of the asset infrastructure. Another conversation I had, which we have to be confidential, but with the federal government, they've appointed heads of AIs for each of the agencies. They want to digitize all their assets, which means that if they digitize all their assets, they again, they'll be using digital twins to run, monitor, track, and operate them. So the bottom line is, NVIDIA's present uh, penetration is as I mentioned, 40%, which people think is a negative with just the hyperscalers, but that's the, actually the biggest positive. Those companies, those four hyperscalers, understand the benefits of AI, which is why they're actually leveraging it and spending more and more. The other people, which is the corporates, haven't even begun to touch it the municipalities, the federal government, and then essentially the military. There's going to be an AI arms race. <laughs> Whoever becomes the preeminent AI leader will be the preeminent country, the preeminent corporation, and the preeminent city. All right. Fun stuff. Love the target. Love the updated fresh view. Keep talking it up. Maybe we can get that high soon. Thanks, Phil. All right, listen up. I'm opening up my calendar for one-on-one -on -one calls to discuss your financial future and even visits to CNBC Studios, limited spots available. So hit the link below and reserve yours before they're gone.